sorry, it's a bit difficult to, to remain composed. This is a very sad day. Uh, the IOC is in deep mourning. Here you have a young athlete who lost his life in pursuing his passion. He had a dream to participate in the Olympic Games. He trained hard and he had this fatal accident. I have no words to say what we feel. The tragic death of an athlete at the Olympics for the first time in more than a decade is the top story at Vancouver today. Hello, I'm Christine Brennan. And I'm Reed Scherner. Georgia slider Nodar Kumari Tashvili was speeding through the final curve of the Whistler Sliding Center during a Friday training run when he was thrown out of the track and into an unpadded steel pole. USA Today's Jeff Zilgit was on the scene. I think they're looking for some kind of uh, answers to, you know, what can be done to, if there's going to be no modifications to the track, what can be done to make the track a little bit safer, especially at that point of the track where the crash occurred on Friday. There, there were not many athletes uh, around uh, uh, Friday uh, after it had happened uh, that they were, you know, taken away or some had already left because their training was done. But anyone else who was left, whether it, uh, you know, were, were journalists, um, staffers, you, know, you, you could quite tell that, that people were, were uh, quite shaken by, you know, either witnessing or seeing any part of uh, what had happened. More than a dozen sliders, including four Americans, have crashed in training runs at Whistler so far. Officials say sliders will be given one additional training run, seven instead of six runs. The first men's luge competition is scheduled to begin tonight. Christine, we've, this is a tragedy. There aren't a whole lot at the Olympics. Uh, here is one, and um, it happened at the beginning. So you know, what now? You know, Reed, unbelievable. On a day of such happiness and joy, you know, as, as all of Canada is coming together, the torch relay, you know, you turn on any TV in any hotel and any, you know, restaurant anywhere, and it's, the, it's these people running and passing the torch in this delightful moment. And then this, this other news starts to hit, and then the reports start to come in, and, and, and Twitter and, and blogging, you know, and then the worst is, you know, realized. Uh, as a young man, 21 years old, is dead. And, and uh, you know, it's the juxtaposition of such happiness and such joy with an opening ceremonies, and then the absolute most devastating tragic loss. I, I don't remember anything quite like this in an Olympic Games that I've covered. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the next 15, 16 days come, come about and whether the, you know, it happening so early in the Games, whether that casts a pall or whether the excitement of the Games overwhelms people. Well, and it's, and I think you're absolutely right, Reid. We don't know. Um, you know, we've talked about other glitches or weather issues, and now this is clearly is not a glitch. It's, this is a huge thing. And you wonder, you know, is this a bit star-crossed? You know, uh, is, there, is this an omen? We don't know. Um, but it's one of those things that is just uh, unbelievably devastating and shocking, the kind of thing that you just, you can't believe that this is happening on this day of all days in Canada with, with such hope and asp uh, aspirations, excitement about this day. Right. It's the one story you want to say we wish we weren't going to follow for the next two weeks. We're going to follow it. Yeah. So we'll see what happens then. Well, and also the issue of, of the sport itself and the speed on the track, you know, that's something that's so important. The, uh, some of the luge athletes have been saying it's too fast. And yet these are the games of ice and snow and it's speed and it's ice. It, it's, it's the kind of thing that you can't avoid, but obviously now it has to be looked into. Yes, it certainly does. And we'll continue to follow that story. Out on the street, fans are sympathizing with Georgia's loss. The mood was very sad and somber when Georgia, the Georgia team walked out. He came out here to be Olympian and to prove himself for his country. And uh, it's a heartfelt loss. I heard it over uh, the radio on my way back from school today. And I uh, just felt that I'd represent by having this ribbon on my arm. And uh, my heart, uh, my condolences go out to the family and the country. You know what? We're going to carry on. The Olympics are going to go on. And it's going to be a fun two weeks. That's for sure. Woo! Canada, go! The Georgian Olympic team still participated in last night's opening ceremonies. It was a solemn and dignified moment. The crowd of 60,000 gave the team a very warm standing ovation, and the small delegation wore black armbands and black scarves. They left immediately after marching in. Christine, um, let's go to something a little bit more pleasant, yeah. and that is the opening ceremonies, and it was a very touching moment with the uh, Georgian team.
but the whole atmosphere, you were in the stadium, I actually watched it, uh, you know, NBC's feed. So tell me what it was like in the yeah. stadium and what the highlights were there. Well, the first thing was, it, you're indoors. And obviously, uh, it's the first time I've ever been indoors at an opening ceremonies. And I, I kind of liked it. It was raining outside, so it was nice to not be in the rain. Uh, the other issue, I think, that was the noise. The, everything is just magnified. So you were really in this vortex of excitement for Canada. Um, you know, it was very Canadian, which of course goes without saying. This is Canada's thing. Every every country does its natural thing, its uh, its history, traditions. Uh, so I I think it was you know it was was striking to me, and I know you you were in Beijing as well, how different it was from the Beijing Olympics, and I was glad. You know, Beijing spent a hundred million dollars on on its opening ceremonies or more. And there were dissidents in jail, and you know all the people are in poverty. But boy, let's spend a hundred million dollars on our opening ceremony. Well, this is a democracy, and it was calm and and sweet and nice and and well done and classy, and I thought it w it spoke volumes about the people of Canada. I, I thought it was great. Yeah, there was one I, we on television, and we'll ask you because you were in there, and I was getting feedback from fans. There seemed to be a glitch with the. Uh, torch lighting. Yeah. Uh, there was Steve Nash, there was Gretzky, and they sort of looked at each other, and they did a close-up of Nash, and he was sort of laughing, and you got the feeling that something wasn't working. Was that what e happened? Exactly, and you had the two other, actually, what, three other athletes, Gr Nancy Green and uh, the, uh, the other stars of, you know, Canada. Obviously, what a great moment for them, and they're standing, and they're waiting, and they're waiting, and they're waiting, and we're not quite sure what's going on either. And I started to wonder, actually, like, does the torch, could it burn down? You know, like, almost like a candle on a birthday cake. The answer is no, but you like what was going to happen um, and it looked like one of the, uh, the the arms of the thing didn't come up but you know the, I remember with Muhammad Ali in Atlanta and the little pulley to get the flame up there uh, you know kind of got stuck and you know Kathy Freeman in 2000 she's standing under this incredible waterfall as she's lighting the torch and she's getting all wet so uh, these things occasionally happen. Mm -hmm. I, I think it will be forgotten in, in, you know, hopefully by, uh, by the time people are watching this. Right, and now the choreographers can, all the thousands of choreographers they hired can do what they do best, and that's design a long program <laughs> somewhere down <laughs> in the next two weeks and get a gold medal for your specialty, figure skating, which we will be talking about for the next two weeks. Uh, but exactly. We'll, uh, now the easy part. The, the, game, the uh, uh, opening ceremonies are over, and we can just get to the... As they the say, events. let the games begin. Let the games but, begin. But I think it was one of those, you know, may, some of the songs and the music may have dragged on a little bit. Uh, I'm sure at 11 or 11.30 Eastern time, people were saying, okay, I'll, uh, I'll wake up in the morning mm -hmm. to find out who lights the flame, you know. But I think that uh, overall, it was, it was well done. And I also thought, going back to the, the tragedy, I thought it was beautifully crafted how they uh, honored uh, the memory of this great athlete the, the, the flags at half staff, but when do you see that? Uh, and, and they left them there. So when you left the, uh, the arena, the stadium, those flags were still at half staff, and yeah. I think that's a, a very fitting tribute. Yeah, it's a tough combination of the tragedy and the celebration. You're trying to mix the two. I thought they did a pretty good job. Yeah, it's, yeah. And, and also doing it in about four or five hours time. Yes, yeah. um, again, that's a very minor part of the story, but nonetheless, I think right. they struck the right balance. Right. Okay.